in this video a look at combinatorial coding <coughs> this as a means for obtaining excellent data compression and also <coughs> as a means for hashing for table lookup <coughs> now initially when we are confronted with the problem of trying to code a large number bit string as a smaller one the natural tendency is to adopt a combinatorial approach only to that extent we find that we have to make we look at the main two major identities where we say ncr is equal to ncn minus r the number of ways of selecting r objects out of n is the same as the ways of rejecting the n minus r objects out of n <coughs> and the number of ways of selecting r objects out of n is the same as the number of ways of selecting r objects out of n minus 1 or if you have selected one of the objects out of n out of the remaining n minus 1 to select r minus 1 objects <coughs> if you look at it plainly this way you will <coughs> you never know if you apply any number of methods for generating combinations <coughs> you will find that all of them for r nearly equal to n by 2 ncr is nearly equal to 2 power n or close to 2 per n minus the n minus 1 or something like that so in other words all of them will be more or less around that area of n by 2 all the other combinations will be very very small for extremely large and most of the approaches that you adopt you will find that you will always you know come across this barrier but it can be overcome easily i think <coughs> but as uh, now the idea is now we have to think how fast can we generate an r combination suppose we count the number of r's in a bit string how fast can we generate an r combination of an n set any given r answer is uh, Let's say if out of n objects here, 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1, we have to select, we have, select, we have to, we have some R combination. Okay, some R combination, A, B. What we can do, suppose now we start off with one, we select one arbitrary number from this and check whether it belongs to this set. There are only two possibilities, right? either it belongs or does not belong. If it belongs, then <coughs> all those R combinations which do not contain that chosen element but can be eliminated, which will again be N minus 1 C, R minus 1. So, which will be nearly half of it, which will, which means that each time if R decreases by one, we can get a compression of at least two per half, two power n minus one. Now, instead of selecting one object out of this and checking, if we select two objects out of this, two possibilities, four possibilities are right. Either that both the objects we have chosen do not belong to this R combination or one of the objects such as this one or this one, this one or this one, or both both of them belong together. If neither of them belong to the R, co R combination, then what we can do is eliminate all of those combinations for which at least one of them belongs. If both of them also belong, the other also eliminate. In other words, we can eliminate a lot of these combinations by just making one choice here. Now, if it is this and this, the larger and the smaller, so let's say we can assume some order 
you know, one larger number and the other a smaller number. If it is this combination, then we can eliminate all those combinations from the chosen one action. All those combinations for which the smaller number <coughs> does not belong and the larger number belongs or the larger number belongs or both. So we only need those key combinations for which all the other remaining combinations can be eliminated this way. So with each single comparison itself. So now naturally <coughs> if we want to maximize, minimize the number of comparisons and maximize elimination at each step, as many R, R combinations as possible at each step, we might expect A slightly la the larger value we take somewhere between <coughs> we can eliminate more as we increase the value of R. Now you can try an obvious value which suggests itself is square root of R as the selection process for this. At each step we can eliminate quite a lot of elements from this R combination so that this way of generating combination so you just have to think how fast can we generate a combination an R combination so here as you can see if you select an element then all those similarly if you select two elements two random elements now once you have generated and eliminated all of those the element you have selected cannot be selected again. Those which only which those which both which you have selected and rejected can be omitted from the set. You will have to select another two more which have not been selected earlier. Because you know what the situation is of that particular element you had selected earlier. So each time you are decreasing n by a quite a quite a large amount. The number of comparisons you are making also will be fewer. Now, look at using combinatorial methods for the sake of hash table management, basically. Here, you are given a key which lies, which you have to write a hash function and look at the unordered hash function. The number of collisions is few. Usually, we get close to 50% because nc n by 2 is maximum for n equal to n by 2. So half the remainders of what you take, only about half of them will be chosen at any time. The other half will, chances of them being chosen, very, very remote. So it's more or less impossible to break this value. Now what happens is, we have a large number here. If you take the remainder, you're only considering this part. The rest of it you're omitting. If you try to sort of jumble it up and then take the mod again, here what you can do is, rather than try and jumble it up, what happens is if only half the remainders are chosen for different values of this quotient, the other half are colli colliding with these remainders. That's what's happening there. So what you have to do is, you can do is, <coughs> for depending on the quotient, you can sub select a subset of S, that is, if you take SC S minus N, now SC N is equal to SC S minus N, we know, right? So what happens is for different values of the quotient, right? So SC, SC N will be clearly equal to, nearly, nearly equal to S power N. So one value you have already chosen here, divided 
So, <coughs> depending on the value of the quotient, you s what the value of the quotient is, you select a subset of s minus n elements from this, and or hash take mod or some other hash, and hash it to that. So now the chances of collision will be further distributed because the quotient will be different. So depending on the quotient alone, you choose the subset. You can choose them in such a fashion that if you know a fair amount about the distribution of the quotients, you can, the selection you take could be slightly arbitrary. You could just slightly jump with this up and then take the selection. You can have a one-to-one -one permutation of Q to Q itself and then take a this thing. So then also you can, you will have some difference. So the probability of collision should be greatly reduced. This is another way of doing it. Now what we can also do a similar one for ordered, ordered hashing as well. There again we can use permutations instead. If you have a table of size S, you can, it's a sort of com combining <coughs> the two approaches of synonym chaining as well as rehashing. There are two main collision resolution techniques as we know in hashing. <coughs> One is the uh, rehashing, which is the number of probes that you rehash to a number of times you retry to hash. As the table gets filled up, the chances of you hitting a <coughs> open location decreases very, very fastly, very fast, even in rehashing, getting close to 90, 98, 90 person in uh, say a logarithmic lookup number of rehashes if you fix it at that so that you at least match a tree hash, tree's performance the chances you will find <coughs> even if you come up with slightly good ideas for that you will hit a certain ceiling there, there and even one percent of a slightly thousand is still quite uh, unused areas there <coughs> So here you can combine both of these. Suppose you have a value S, both the strategies of rehashing and chaining. Now here what you do is you take up, it's very simple. You select square root of S as the table size. Then you maintain the rehash number previous rehash position and pointer to the bucket which is probably located in a file or on the disk or this is the memory part alone so for each in element in the table consists of this record or tuple or this set of elements these values so if uh, so you can just start off initially with one of those when the bucket gets filled up you can increase the rehash number here and choose the second table of right say si square root of s now, <coughs> you have to, re depending on this value of, say, if two locations hash here, both, both of them are sec during the second hash, you can I choose, if you choose the same table here, that means that <coughs> no two positions, for the first rehash, no two positions, different positions, should hash to the same value here for their i in other words for each of these positions you take a permutation of this table the permutation must be such that no two position different positions have the for their previous rehash for no two different positions for the next rehash have the same value simple step by mod will ensure that you know, simple step, or something similar like to that depending on how the, this thing is, you can choose that. So you can gradually keep increasing this. You can keep it. 
So rehash length can be large. You will never need such a large, large this thing. This way you try and fill up the table gradually. You do not try and fill it up in one shot or take S itself as the this thing. All of these are only static hashing tables. Even they yield fairly very very good. As you can see, you, you should be able to optimally fill up the table slowly, gradually. So the use of combinations can be used for filling up hash as well as, well as for coding it. <laughs> so generating combinations, the key idea is to always see the consequence of you making a selection or a rejection allows you to eliminate. That's the main thing that you have to add. If you try to apply the method by means of those identities alone, well, what the identity says, the first one is what is consequential, as we can see, NCR is equal to. In other words, if we select an element or a, in a particular subset based on what are in it and what are not in it, you can eliminate a huge amount of. And if you, if you select 